Hello Geosystems people. Today I'm going to tell you about spectra and stars. There are three types, continuous, emission, and absorption. There are a lot of details about this that can make this pretty complicated, but I'm going to try to keep it simple so that you can understand the big picture. So imagine we have a light bulb glowing white hot. <clears throat> you may be familiar with passing light through one of these. So the light from that light bulb passes through this prism and it gets refracted into the color components of white light. You know, you guys have heard this before, I hope, that light, white light is actually the combination of all the other wavelengths, the, the visible wavelengths. And those visible wavelengths, according to Pink Floyd, are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, there's actually violet and indigo. Okay, and they did a pretty good job there getting that right. Continuous spectrum looks like this. It's a smear of color, very, very smooth, where you can't really see the boundaries between the colors. They just sort of blend into each other. That's what a hot object that's glowing will produce. But our sun is not a light bulb. And although it does produce uh, a continuous spectrum from within it, as the light leaves the sun, it passes through its own atmosphere that's cooler and its own atmosphere absorbs some of that light. We really can't see that atmosphere very well. Uh, it's, uh, we're blinded, so we can't see it during the day. But if you had a solar eclipse that blocked out the light, you would be able to see that atmosphere. And what you see here is the corona that almost looks like hair flying out. It's, a, uh, it's the atmosphere of the sun glowing. And if you had a really cool telescope in your backyard and you had an instrument called a spectroscope that you could attach to it, in this case, it's like a big digital camera with a spectroscope attached, and it will uh, separate the light from the sun, uh, from the atmosphere of the sun from the corona into different colors. And what you see is no longer a continuous spectrum. You get something that looks kind of fragmented like there's chunks of the light taken out and that's what happened there are cooler elements gases uh, gas clouds made of different elements like helium and hydrogen and some other things that will absorb the light coming from the core of the sun so when it does this it subtracts some of the light and this becomes something that astronomers can use to do some pretty cool stuff now here's the way to understand this concept. You have this bright star off in the distance and its light is shining through some clouds. And if you notice the first one, it passes through this cold, the light passes through this cold gas cloud and it subtracts the first bar. The second cloud it passes through subtracts another. And the third gas cloud subtracts yet another. These could be all hydrogen or they could be different elements maybe it could be some helium or something else but it's pro most likely it's it's hydrogen and the final result is this box over here what the, what the telescope finally sees as it looks out into space is a uh, absorption spectra that's had three different gas clouds that have removed the light that we see the, the remove the light that produced those dark bands now it can happen in the atmosphere of a star, or it can happen over a great distance with light traveling through space, through gas clouds. But in the end, what happens is these cool gases can subtract the light from what we see coming from a distant star or galaxy, okay? But what does that mean? Well, let's take, this, take a look at this more carefully. Above, we've talked about the continuous spectra. And then at the bottom, we've seen the absorption lines and how those are produced. If you have a light, a bright light passing through a cooler gas, it will subtract, the atoms in that gas will subtract some light. But what happens if you have a hot gas? What if you had a hot gas glowing? The hot gas will produce emission lines. But what do you notice about the emission lines and the absorption lines in this picture. One of the gases is hot, the other one is cold, but the lines are in the same place. 
the lines are the same wavelengths. So what does that tell you about that gas? Or both of those gases? Well, what the answer is, is that they're both the same gas. If you have a hot light that passes the light through a cold gas and it takes away those wavelengths of light, that same gas, if it's glowing hot, will emit those same wavelengths of light. So in this way, we can either determine what a gas is by what it's emitting, the, the, the uh, emission line spectra, or we can look at the cold gas absorption spectra. And in either case, we can tell what elements are producing that based on those spectral lines. So you might have done this before. You might have been in a chemistry class and you have looked at a gas tube like this with a spectroscope and you might have seen something, oh well, here's the apparatus, where you might have seen the spectra after looking through that spectroscope and you may have looked at it and seen some lines like this. This is an emission spectra. You notice it's not a continuous spectra either, but instead of it being dark lines being subtracted from the continuous spectra, it's bright lines that are being emitted at very specific wavelengths. And every element has its own fingerprint of wavelengths. So you don't expect to see this same pattern for every element. And when you do see a certain pattern that represents a certain element, and this happens to be hydrogen, you know that there's hydrogen in that cloud or in that star. In this case, it would be a glowing gas or a star. Something hot that's emitting that has hydrogen in it and it's glowing hot and emitting these wavelengths of light. So this is another example here, but this is just helium, I'm sorry, hydrogen at the top. And I'm not sure what the next one is, might be helium, but there are other gases here and there's a lot of them. I mean, and it, stars have many things inside them. Obviously hydrogen's number one because hydrogen's the most abundant element in the universe. But if you pointed your telescope at images like this, what would you see? If you're looking at a glowing gas cloud here in the Horsehead Nebula, you can see the horse's head in the middle. This is a Hubble telescope picture, by the way. If you looked at it, or you pointed your telescope at one of these objects, the one on the left is a supernova remnant, the Crab Nebula, and the two on the right are white, that similar to the way our sun will die. Those are white dwarfs in the center. And we'll learn more about that later with the lives of stars. But if you, they, they give off light. So if you pointed a telescope with a spectroscope in it, you'd be able to break that light into its components. This is a galaxy seen from Hubble telescope. And another one and another. That's cool. Love that one. These are two galaxies that collided. Or maybe you aimed the telescope at that star cluster on the left side and then zoomed in close on it to that bigger box on the right. And there's all those additional stars inside the core. And if you pointed your telescope at that, what would you see? Or what about if you pointed that telescope with the spectroscope attached to it to one of these galaxies? Everything in this picture is a galaxy. This is a looking at 13 billion light years away from Earth. and it's like having a thousand galaxies in a grain of sand. It's unbelievable. But every single one of them is glowing. So we can point our telescope at it from Earth with a spectroscope. And what will we see? We'll see something like this. So what we see is that every star or glowing object out there produces stellars or spectra. And the spectra is going to be uh, most of the time observed as absorption spectra because it's a hot thing glowing, whether it be a star or a galaxy or some other object that's very hot that we haven't learned about yet. But when that light passes through a cooler gas, either the atmosphere of the star or something between us and the star, that cooler gas is going to subtract light and by absorbing it. And that subtraction is very specific based on which elements are, that light is passing through. And so it tells us what the cooler gas is made of that's around the star or between us and an object. Okay, so when someone asks you, how do we know what those stars are actually made of? We do it by studying the spectra, the light that's coming from the stars. Thank you. I hope that helped.